Hey guys, Kevin here with another video and today we're taking a look at the KW02C Smart Wi-Fi doorbell with remote door access control. Now, I have had one of these installed at my office for the past three months. It works great. I have tried and tested another three doorbells before this one. I tell you this is the most versatile, comes with quite a few options. I'm going to be discussing all the different options. We'll be unboxing, checking out all the different features, all the accessories and I am putting the link to the Amazon listing in the description below. You can purchase the bell from there. This comes with all the extras you need to hook it up to a solenoid lock, which will let you open your door using your smartphone or smart device, such as a tablet. Okay, some key features I really like about the KW02C Smart Wi-Fi doorbell. First of all, you can unlock your door remotely using your smart device. Yes, using your smartphone, you're able to unlock your door, providing you've installed the solenoid lock. It works on Wi-Fi or Ethernet cable. So you've got two options there. It has an inbuilt infrared sensor, which triggers an alarm. It has motion detection, which also triggers an alarm. Both these sensors can be switched off. So if you live in a busy street, don't worry. If a car passes by or a person is passing by, it can be switched off. These are there for people who live in a drive-in, for example, and there shouldn't be anybody there after a certain time. Um, it has an RFID scanner. The RFID scanner comes with five key cards. You can give one card to five different individuals and they can all swipe the card over the RFID scanner in the middle of the KW02C and the solenoid lock will pop open. One last thing, PoE, power over Ethernet. The power over Ethernet means with one cable, one CAT5 or CAT6 cable, you can provide the KW0 to see with all the resources it needs, therefore power and internet over one cable. The length of this video is quite significant. There is a shorter video available which just points out the key features and shows you the bell working. This video goes into some depth and you, there's everything you need to know in this video, guys. Okay, let's have a look at what's inside. Try to do this with one hand. And I'm holding the camera in the other, so bear with me, guys. Okay, standard carton box. Like that. Okay, so first things first, we've got our user manual. It is quite well written. I already have had a look inside, and I'm doing this for the purposes of the video just to show you exactly what you receive and how you receive it. The user manual is well written. I did use it to configure my own smart bell at the house and also at the office. It worked fine. There were some things they could have added, which I'll be discussing in this video, which will help you install it quicker than I did. Okay, there's your user manual. I'll set it aside. That is sticky back tape, which you need to use if you're going to be sticking this to glass, because obviously you can't drill glass, and the only way to stick it on will be using some kind of adhesive or this. I've used it on a glass door, and it's great. It does stick on. It's held so far. No complaints there. All right, so let's have a look. Okay, on one side we've got all our accessories, our power supply unit, our cables, our RFID scanners, uh, RFID cards, sorry, the scanner is actually part of the KW02C. So there's your 12 volt DC, uh, AC to DC power supply. There's your power cable. You'll be running this from the power supply unit to the KW02C Smart Wi-Fi doorbell to power it up. That's your PoE cable power over Ethernet, which means the KW02C can be powered up using a standard Ethernet cable, such as a CAT5 or CAT6 cable. Like that, you will be powering it up and providing also an internet connection to the KW02C without having to run two cables. Now, that's your chime. The chime is actually a USB chime, extremely handy. You can hook this up to any USB power source, such as a mobile phone charger, smartphone charger, uh, smart television, plug it in. It works using Bluetooth and it connects directly to the KW02C. You've got some options here for configuration and also for volume or selecting a different tone or chime. Um, melody. It's got some options there. I stuck to the standard one. You'll be having a listen later on in the video. 
Oh, one other thing, you can hook up more than one of these. So you can buy more than one. Only one comes included in the package. It is very loud, it is sufficient. But if it's going to be installed somewhere where someone is hard of hearing, or it's a big house, or a big office, you can put more than one. They all connect in the same way. Excellent. There are our RFID cards. You get five access key cards, which are the blue ones. The yellow and red are used for adding and removing a card from the system. So you might add one today and have one removed later on using the red RFID card. Set that aside. There are your screws, mounting screws. There's a tool, an Allen key, which should use for inserting this here. I want to show you. It is an anti-theft screw, basically. Try. Have a look. Now, the, the green plugs, you drill a hole, obviously, in the wall. Um, stick those in, obviously, when you're not mounting the glass. Um, and they are quite specific. I'll discuss why later on. You can't use any row plug. We call them row plugs here. Um, these have been sort of cut off at the tip. So there's no, there's no lip or a very tiny lip, which comes in very handy. I'll tell you why later on. Let's zoom out of there. Okay, set that aside. That's going to be used in conjunction with this remote control here. The remote control can be used or should be used uh, to open the door remotely without getting out of your car or without having to walk up to the KW02C and swiping one of them cards, like um, a garage door, you know, open and close. Set that aside. There's your cabling. Now, these cables are going to be used for um, the, the, the door unlocking function of the KW02C. Now, I must say that there's a lot of stuff in the box which you can do without. For example, personally, myself, I haven't even hooked it up to an to a unlocking uh, solenoid. I'm just using it as a smart bell which connects to my phone and notifies me every time com somebody comes to the office and I'm not there yet. Maybe they come before I've opened or I've run for lunch. I've run out for lunch and I don't want to miss the sale. Anyway, now, in here we have the actual unit, the actual KW02C smart Wi-Fi doorbell with remote access control. Now, they've included an 8 gigabyte micro SD card. Now, I need to specify it is 8 gigabytes because, in my opinion, it's quite small. You do get quite a bit of recording because the file format it uses is quite compressed, but you can insert a card up to 32 gigabytes rather than 8. It's free, it's included. Hey, who's complaining? There's the actual KW02C within its plastic housing. Now, let's try to get this one out of here without breaking, ripping the box. Okay, there's the KW02C. All right, so. Everything comes quite nicely packed, I must say. The user manual is well, well thought out. Um, excuse me, I'm sorry about that. Now, there's the KW02C. It is quite heavy. It is made of aluminium or aluminum, depending where you're watching this video from, which, which country. Um, it's within its plastic housing here. That is a rain and dust cover. It also shields the camera. This top part here shields the camera from direct sunlight, which makes the image much, much clearer. Now, I'll remove it from the plastic housing. Have a quick look at that. I mean, it is what it is. It's quite straightforward. You've got your mounting holes pre-drilled already. There, all over the place. You have quite a big hole in the middle where you can actually slot through a Cat5 or Cat6 cable which means it will go into there. I'll discuss that shortly. Okay, there's your anti-theft, that there. That's your anti-theft alarm trigger. I need to mention this because it will make your life quite difficult if you do not properly 
uh, insert the KW02C into the housing. That thing there will waste quite a lot of time for you unless you know how to deal with it properly. I'll zoom back out and I will set this one aside. There's the KW02C. I'm trying not to make this video too long, but there are some things I'd like to show you. So again, quite heavy, decent build. It is mostly made of aluminium, aluminium. The back is plastic, so it's half and half. The front side, the part which is exposed to the elements is made of aluminium, which makes it more resistant uh, to corrosion or breaking or whatever. Now, that's our camera. This, the KW02C does have two modes for camera. It's got night vision or else standard normal, normal camera. So the camera itself produces some very nice images. You have here the microphone to the right. There's the microphone. Sound quality is good. That's your infrared sensor right there. The infrared sensor in low light conditions will automatically trigger the night vision camera. So you may be using the bell and you're gonna get a normal full color picture when the light conditions are dim, sunset, so on, it's gonna to turn to black and white. That's your, your night vision. Now, there is the scanner I mentioned earlier. That is the actual RFID scanner. This is where you'd swipe your cards, your, your key cards. So basically you'd get the blue one and swipe it across there. It will trigger a relay, send a 12 volt signal to, to your solenoid lock and pop your door right open. Now, there's the push button. This lights up in blue, quite nice at night. Push button sends notifications to any connected smart devices, or if you didn't connect a smart device, it will trigger the chime we mentioned earlier. Very loud, there's your speaker at the back. Now, there's our speaker, which will allow for two-way voice communication between the bell the smart bell KW02C and the person trying to communicate with the owner of that bell. At the bottom, we've got our anti-theft screw placement in there. That's where we'd be um, screwing in the Allen key, which is included in, in the packet with the rest of the screws. Now on the side, we've got our micro SD card slot. That's where we'll be recording our events. An event would be someone ringing the bell. And you can set it to start recording a few seconds before and say a minute and a half after. And like that, you've got the person walking up to the bell as well on your video. And it doesn't start recording only after they've pressed the button. At the back, we have... This is the slot where I showed you earlier the anti-theft um, plastic would fit into. It needs to be placed quite well into there. Otherwise an alarm will trigger and you can't configure the device. That's your RJ45 standard ethernet connector. Now, as I said earlier, you could either run one cable into the bell, which will have internet, both internet and power, using the PoE cable, the power over ethernet cable, which I showed you earlier. Put that into frame quickly. That's your PoE cable right there. Okay. And now I'm going to try and show you some of the wiring back here. Okay, quite standard, quite straightforward. Now, if you want to use this um, as I am, without the door unlocking function, it's quite easy to set up. If you want to include the door unlocking function, I do suggest uh, you either um, employ a technician, somebody who's quite uh, good at installing door locks or a professional, because the last thing you want to do is, is try to tap into your, your lock and either burn out the actual solenoid or trigger the door when you're not there. Anyway, there's a whole lot of things which can go wrong when, when you're playing around with a door. So unless you're quite handy, uh, I suggest staying away from hooking this up to your door yourself. Anyway, so on the left, you've got your 12 volt DC connector. Now it's very good. They have a notch at the top. The notch is there to prevent you from switching the polarity, from switching the wire the wrong way around. 
which will fry the device. But because there's that notch up there, it is almost physically impossible. I will show you what I mean. There's the notch. Try and, yeah. And this is going to fit into here. And that's going to be your power cable. If you don't use PoE. If you use PoE, you don't need this. Set that aside. Now, here we've got our device ID 5718556. You're going to need to um, keep a record of that number before you put your smart Wi-Fi doorbell into the plastic housing because you will need that later on to configure the device. Now, some things which aren't mentioned in the user manual which did confuse me a little bit. However, now that I've mentioned them, you should be able to get this done quicker. First of all, always make sure the KW02C sits perfectly aligned into its plastic housing. If it doesn't, you can't configure the device because the configuration process will not be initiated by the firmware which is installed on the bed. What do I mean? Quite simple. You've got these two not the, these two bits here. One, two. Try and, there you go. One, two. They should fit snug into them too. Back there. Okay. Also, this here needs to fit into this hole here. If it doesn't fit perfectly, you're going to trigger your alarm. Now, it's easy. All you have to do is look at it from the side. If this looks perfectly flush over here, let's try and focus here, sorry guys, then it's fine. Now, if it looked something like this, then it's not fine. Why would that happen? Mostly because the cables at the back won't be um, running through the correct channel. I'm trying to focus, there you go. What I mean is, if I put the power cable in, I need to make sure that it's going to run through this channel here. If it's up here, like this, it's going to keep the KW02C from fitting snug into the plastic housing and that's going to cause problems later on. Enough of that. So what I'm going to do now is, I'll be pausing the video, I'll be setting up some basic cables and then when I unpause the video you're going to be able to see what I've done and why I've done it and how to configure the device. Basically what I'll do is run this cable into here um, and, I'll, and I'll explain shortly. Okay guys I'm back. All I've done is I've used the power cable, I've connected it to the 12 volt DC socket I showed you earlier. I've made sure the cable isn't pinched between the KW02C and the plastic housing. Then I've connected the power cable to the power supply unit, like so. Straightforward, guys. Just plug and play. All right. Now let's just pull that out in there. Now you know exactly what I've done. That's all I've done, guys. Okay. Um, I'll pause the video again. I'll have it all plugged in. And when I'm back, I'll show you how to configure the device onto a smartphone uh, using, using a very basic connection. Now, like this, it's going to be wanting Wi-Fi because this is a, also a Wi-Fi device. Um, if I didn't want to use Wi-Fi, all I need to do is plug in a cable there and it's ready to go. It's that simple. It uses DHCP, which means when you connect this to your modem or router, it's automatically going to assign an IP address on your network, which shouldn't conflict with anything else on the network. And that way you're going to be able to um, find the device using the app, obviously providing that your smartphone is on the same network. So make sure it's not connected to your 3G or 4G and make sure you are on the same Wi-Fi network as the KW02C is connected to. I'm going to pause the video again and when I'm back we're going to go through the configuration process. Okay guys, I'm back. I've simply set up the KW02C with the power cord which is provided in the box. I'll just show you what I've done. 
On the right, I've got the other iPhone 6, which I'll be using for demonstration purposes in this video. And we will be using that phone to interact with this KW02C. Now, let's start from the left. On the left, I've got myself the power cord, which comes included in the box. It is the cable with the notch on the end. I'll show you shortly uh, which one I'm referring to. Um, flip this around and show you what we've done. So, as you can see, I'll zoom in. You've got the power cord inserted on the left. Let's just get rid of that. Now it's got the notch on top, which prevents you from inserting the cable the other way around, so that you've always got the positive on the left. Um, I'll be powering up the KW02C. Before I do that, it's important to know that you take note of your ID there. Take a note of that. And keep it handy. You'll be needing it shortly. I am just going to pause the video because it's impossible for me to do this with one hand without getting this cable pinched. And this is something you really need to be careful. You don't want to pinch this cable up here. Because if you do, it won't fit correctly into the housing. Your anti-theft plastic won't fit into there. And you'll trigger the alarm and it won't go into configuration mode. I'll just pause and I'll be back shortly. Okay, so KW02C is perfectly aligned in its housing. You can tell from the side here, it is straight. You can tell that the cable isn't pinched anywhere. The plastic fits perfectly with the back of the KW02C. And that tells me that the anti-theft plastic is inserted properly into the, the, the hole, which I showed you earlier. I'll be powering up the device now. I'm just going to switch on the main switch. Just be a second. And that's the prompt we get from the KW02C. Now, what I'm doing is I'm waiting for the KW02C to go into configuration mode which means it will tell you that it is awaiting configuration. Don't forget, this is going to be a Wi-Fi configuration. We need to make sure our Wi-Fi is a 2.4 gigahertz band and not 5.8. 5.8 will not work. If you only have 5.8, you can consider putting a, a router in between, which does use 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi signal. Um, I'm waiting for the configuration to start. In the meantime, waiting for configuration. there you go. Um, I'm going to show you on an iPhone 6 uh, how to do that. Let's just unlock that phone quickly. And there you go. So, normal iPhone 6, I've downloaded already and installed from the App Store an app called Cable. Cable, Kilo, Bravo, Echo, Lima, Lima. There you go. We'll, we'll zoom in. And that's the app. Now, first things first, after you download and install the app, you need to create an account. Uh, to register is really simple, click on the register button. Uh, you need to enter an email address and the password and you've registered. It is that simple, guys, and that quick. I've already done this. I'm gonna launch. Now, as you can see, I already have the one outside the office, which is running. I've got another one I was using yesterday. Anyway, this screen here will be blank for you. But you still have all the other options, which are down there. And up there as well. You just have a blank screen here, but you will have the plus. So you're going to click on plus. Now we've got different options available. Let's set that phone down there so that I could show you a little bit better. So let's start from here. So we have add new device, add on or add an online device, excuse me, or scan QR code. Let's add a new device. Now we have to choose what kind of device or what kind of configuration we've opted for. The device is the same as the KW02C. We've got either smart link or we've got a wired connection or AP. Now we didn't go for the wired connection. The wired connection would be if I inserted an um, an RJ45 plug at the back of the bed with a, with a Cat5 or standard Cat6 cable. But we're going to go for the smart link, the Wi-Fi option, okay? So select that. Now, I've got to select my Wi-Fi network, which I make sure is not 5G. This router, actually modem I have from my internet service Wait provider, emits two signals, 5 gigahertz and 2.4. I know that because at the end of the BA20, 
it would say 5G if this bell uh, actually knew how to connect to the 5G, but instead it's the standard one. I've put in my password, that's all done, and now I'm gonna click next. I've zoomed in to try and make sure you get everything there. Now, for us to interact with the KW02C, there's no interface, there's no screen on the KW2C for me to enter the password and stuff. So what's going to happen is my phone is going to emit a sound and this sound is going to enter the bell via the microphone. And the bell is going to, like that, get the, um, the name of the network it needs to connect to and then it's also going to receive the password which will be inserted there too. Sounds a bit different to, to the way you'd normally do something like this, but um, it does work. So, we've heard the beep already in the beginning. Now, it tells me to keep the phone approximately 30 centimeters away from the KW02C. The speaker needs to be facing the phone because my phone is going to start emitting a sound. It's important I don't talk during this process. It's important that it's a quiet environment. It is a bit noisy here. I've got some construction work going outside. Um, so hopefully it will work first time around. If it doesn't, you might either have a noisy room or maybe there are kids screaming in the background, I don't know. Um, it, it might take more than one try. Hopefully in this video it will work first time around. Here we go. Okay, perfect. She did say Wi-Fi configuration is down, but for some reason that's what uh, happens every time. Reason being is that after the Wi-Fi has been configured on the device, it shuts down the ability to configure Wi-Fi again. Maybe they could have worded it a bit differently from the factory, but that's a good sign. We know it's a good sign as well because the phone now came up automatically with a different screen, which is also good. Now. It asks me to name the device and enter a device password. Now, um, to name the device, I'll just go for something like, um, like testing or something like that. I'll just pause the video, fill in the details and unpause. So I've paused, filled in the details and now we're going to click save. Let's just try that there. We've got save, top corner. And there you go, I've saved, camera's online, ceiling to the office is right there, and so what I've done is I've pressed the, the volume there to, to stop my phone repeating what I'm saying and then causing an echo like when you're talking into a microphone and it's too loud. Okay, so as you can see, the camera is in operation, the, the KW02C is working perfectly fine, and now I can run you through some different uh, features which are available on the app. So let's just reorient everything around. Okay guys, so I've just switched the phone around like that, and automatically the screen came to full screen and now we can see what the KW02C is seeing in real time. We'll zoom in. Now on the left at the bottom I can select between HD or SD. Here I can mute the sound at the moment it's muted. can unmute it. That's the echo I was talking about earlier that's why I stopped it. We've got our microphone and this is two-way voice communication between my phone and the KW02C. So the iPhone here and the KW02C, I can speak to the KW02C and the speaker on the KW02C will emit the sound. Let me show you. Hello. Hello. 
obviously we need to switch that off we can take pictures captured successfully or capture succeeded we can take video now when we press this button here it's recording onto the micro SD card I've inserted into the side of the KW02C right in there before I put it into the plastic housing right there you can stop recording that's really handy if somebody's outside your door you can just uh, click the record we also can open the door using this button if obviously I had already connected the cables to an electronic lock it asks you confirm to open the door in case you're thinking what if I hit it and I'm gonna pop open my door no it's gonna ask you if I confirm you're gonna hear the relay on the KW02C let's do that and that was the relay sending out a 12 volt signal to the plug at the back which would be connected to a solenoid lock what I'll do now is I'll zoom out there's your date and time stamp to the right is our full screen mode or exit full screen mode now let me show you one which is already connected outside my office there you go that's the one outside my office flip to full screen and there you go so this is outside my office now and I can zoom in there's some guy doing something with a bike well it's his bike I know the person so that's fine but say it wasn't say it was someone um, thieving I could basically take a picture and now I've got the picture saved on the phone and not on the SD card because pictures are saved on the phone whereas videos are saved on the SD card and there you have it we can also improve the quality of the image a little bit now the image quality will be improved on the actual recording on the SD card I'm sorry guys but holding this with one hand and trying to film with the other isn't as easy as I thought let's see there you go okay now guys ever since I've installed this bell outside my office it's been excellent because say I went out for lunch say I had to go on an errand quickly someone would walk by um, I've stuck a sticker on the door which says please use the smart bell when the door is closed and it really works well people do actually press the bell my phone rings and when my phone rings I can have a two-way voice communication with them a two-way uh, voice conversation with them and tell them hey I'll be back in a minute hey can you please come back in half an hour and you can see traffic passing by it can be used also as a camera at any time from home or wherever I am and I can keep a keep an eye on what's happening outside my door um, I will be walking to the front of the office and I'll show you how I've wired it up and also um, how it is stuck to the to the facade and there goes the, the biker guy you could hear him twice once through the microphone of the KW02C and the speaker on the iPhone and then obviously through the other microphone of this camera I'm using to record the video it's very quick there's maybe a one second delay which is nothing really um, I'm just gonna pause the video and show you how I've connected it outside so it's fairly simple I've done the same thing I've showed you inside I've connected the power supply which was included in the box to the mains I've run the cable really really simple put some put some clips obviously you could wire this ever however you like and I've drilled the hole stuck the wire outside I'll pause and go outside now there's the KW02C stuck to the wall and I've even cut one of these stickers I've got a machine ring the smart doorbell when the door is closed and there's the door So there you have it guys, um, the KW02C configured using Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi is the, the more complicated uh, way of doing it you can say because if I connected an Ethernet cable to the back then all I would have had to select in the KBEL app is the add wired device 
it would have automatically found it on the network, providing that my phone was a, was actually connected using Wi-Fi and not 3G or 4G. Make sure you're not connected to 3G or 4G, or else your phone isn't on the same network as the cable, and the configuration process will drive you nuts. It just will, will keep on um, not finding anything. Obviously, before I told you to keep a record of the ID at the back, because sometimes when configuring the cable app, you do need to enter the device ID to search the network for that device. Today, we didn't need it because the, the app has since been updated and it is much simpler now to configure the device. Something I did want to discuss earlier were these screws. So you get this small bag with some row plugs. So basically what you do is you drill a hole about six millimeters wide and insert one of these plugs into the wall and then uh, you'd use the screws to mount the KW02C plastic housing to the wall. Now, it's important that um, you do actually use these row plugs or row plugs like these. What I mean is they don't have a big lip at the top. If you do have row plugs with a lip, they will cause problems. The lip will actually keep the KW02C from sitting flush in the housing, like that, and you will end up triggering the anti-theft alarm. I'll just trigger it now, just, I didn't, just, just to show you what that is. So I've, I've lifted it immediately. An anti-theft alarm is triggered and the phone will also receive a notification. I've just switched that off. Um, that an anti-theft alarm trigger is in progress. In now, also what I'd like to mention, I've, I've switched it off, um, is the anti-theft screw at the bottom. That's another way to know you've lined it up correctly. If you can see the hole there, then you know you've lined it up correctly. If it looks something like this, then you haven't lined it up correctly at all. And the anti-theft alarm will trigger. You've got two screws included in the packet. They are quite small and they are prone to be lost. So, um, you know, be careful. There's the screw, the one down there. You even have an Allen key included to tighten it into place. So what you'd be doing is drilling holes in the wall. Bear with me while I say that. Be drilling holes in the wall. You would insert the green plugs into the wall and then the screw is going to go through here, through, through these pre-drilled holes. Now, you might be tempted to use washers. These are some things which aren't listed in the manual, but I did actually um, encounter. If you put a washer there and then put the screw on top, then most likely your washer of choice is not going to fit into that hole there. If it doesn't, and that's why that hole is there, to keep the screw head in there, then these two, zoom out, will not sit flush. If they don't sit flush, you've guessed it, anti-theft alarm will trigger, configuration process will not be activated by the KW02C smart Wi-Fi doorbell, and you're going to have problems. I did have these problems because I did actually add some washers and the screw at the bottom just wouldn't line up with the washers. No way. So I had to remove the washers. I did get screws with slightly bigger heads on them, but which still do fit in these grooves. Another thing to look out for is make sure the wires are passing through the channel here. If you do choose to pass the wire from underneath, like I did outside, where I just showed you now, the wires are going to exit from these holes here, either left or right. So you need to make sure that your cables, either being the Ethernet cable or the power cable, do pass through this channel here. And that's why those channels are there, to make sure everything sits flush. Otherwise, your anti-theft is going to drive you nuts. So let's take a quick look at the RFID system on board the KW02C. I have here on the right, I've got my five blue key cards, the ones which allow access to the solenoid lock to pop open. I've got a red and a yellow. The red one says remove card and the yellow one says add card. So 
Say I wanted to gain access to the door, say I wanted to pop open the solenoid lock through the KW02C. The click at the end is the relay sending out a signal to the solenoid lock. Now, in this video, I don't have a solenoid lock actually wired to the device, but that's how it works. Now, let's say I wanted to remove this card. I'll take my red remove or delete card. I would swipe once. It's waiting because there's the red light on over there. Swipe that one once and now swipe the red one once again. And now when I swipe this, the relay shouldn't trigger and I should get an error instead with flashing red lights. And there you have it. That's how the RFID system works on the KW02C. You get five access cards, therefore five different individuals can use the RFID card to gain access to the door, providing a solenoid lock has been installed. Okay, so here's an example of a notification on a Samsung S7 smartphone. I'm gonna hit the call button here and the Samsung, which is connected right now via Wi-Fi to my network, is going to receive the call. It's very quick. It took about two seconds. I've got already a picture on screen, so I'd know who's at the door and I can answer. First thing I'll do is switch off the mic and switch off the speaker. And I, av I avoid echoes. And there you have it, a live connection between the KW02C smart Wi-Fi doorbell and my Samsung Galaxy S7. Thanks for watching my video guys, I hope you did find it helpful and informative. If you did already purchase one of these bells, I hope it is enough to get you up and running. Please feel free to leave any questions in the comment section below and I will attempt to answer them as soon as I get a chance to. Um, I did leave a link to the Amazon uh, listing in the description below as well, that's where you can purchase this uh, smart Wi-Fi doorbell from. And I hope to see you next time. Bye and take care.